a nation. History bears testament to those who have led a nation. From the early kings that united warring tribes to create some semblance of a nation, to those that have caught the spirit and essence of their people and turned it into the ingredients to forge empires. We have seen those who have risen to lead. Kings, queens, emperors, revolutionaries, generals, presidents and prime ministers. Each has sought to harness the power of a nation and with it govern it. Some seek stability, others glory and conquest, and others wish to make the nation great again. From Julius Caesar to Margaret Thatcher, from Cleopatra to JFK, from Queen Elizabeth to Winston Churchill, and from Wu Zetian to Barack Obama, we have witnessed leaders rise and fall. The great and the greedy, the peaceful and the pugilists, the builders and the bringers of destruction. The world has witnessed many leaders, but what if your favorite YouTubers found themselves installed as a leader of a nation, be it an existing one or a virgin nation state. How would they lead? What would change? What would remain? What would their key policies be? What would be the national anthem? Who would form their cabinet? How would they rule? Well, you are about to find out in H.G. Tudor's exciting new series, If I Ruled My World, where YouTubers hold the reins of power and you decide if you want them as your leader. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and welcome to If I Ruled My World, where the reins of power are handed to particular YouTubers so they can share their vision of their particular nation. And you get to take a, a walk through their mind as to how they would create and run a country to determine whether it's to your liking or perhaps that it's not. Today, I'm joined by Emma from T and T, who is going to share with us her country. Hello, Emma, and welcome. Hello, thank you for having me here. You're welcome. Now, you are the leader of this country, either an existing one that you decided that you're going to make your own, that you've either been democratically elected or that you've taken over as a coup d'etat, or it might be an entirely fictional country. What is the name of your country, Emma? Um, it's called... <laughs> Okay, can I just say that I started in a humorous way, but then as I noticed, as the questions went on, I become more serious. So this is That's going to be fine. a bit of a mish mishmash. That's so the name of my country is called Zem Bubble Wee. Zem Bubble. Zem, as in it's my name, M's, E-M-Z, okay. Zem Bubble, because obviously I have the bubble community on my channel, and then we, because... It is we, all of us. So it's Zen Bubble We. Okay, Zen Bubble We. Well, <laughs> makes sense when you explain it. When you first look at it, you'd be thinking, goodness me, what's that? Was she, <laughs> was she drunk when she uh, attempted to type that? But no, it makes I sense when you explain it. I was. <laughs> well, it might be that those listening could come to the conclusion that you are a drunken leader. But we'll, we'll, res we'll, we'll reserve judgment in that respect. Now... <laughs> Zem Bubblewee is the country, but what is its capital? 
<laughs> okay, so again, this is a made up one, and this is called Arthurton. <laughs> Arthurton. Okay, as in the gen, as in the gent's name. Yes, it's it's my dog. <laughs> oh, I see. Isn't it is he called Arthur? Yes, he yeah, is. He's not, he's not called Arthurton. Okay, no. So, that's, no. so named named after your dog. Okay, what breed is Arthur? He's a fox red Labrador. Okay, right. And what would your seat of power be, Emma? Uh, do you know I? I this is a, this is one I really struggled with because I am so adverse to anything like this. So I really had to struggle with this. So I I genuinely honestly do not know. I do not know what my seat of power is because I don't like the idea of having power over anyone. So I think I would like to just be somebody that's more advisory, but somebody that's so I've put Arthur in power. And I don't know why. This is how why it started off very humorous because Arthur in this in my country can talk. So he's in power. Animals are very popular in this particular capital. And so I have more of an advisory role. But as you'll see, as the answers go on, I think that slightly changes and I take over. I'm not sure. Yeah. OK, so so we have a talking dog. <laughs> that's a, sort of been installed but actually becomes a puppet because you decide <laughs> that the reins of power are going to come back to you i think possibly <laughs> yeah okay i think there's a you know basket case for this country <laughs> at the moment but as i say there's plenty more that will come out and i appreciate yeah. that you started off in a more humorous vein so <laughs> the seat the seat of power is going to be a dog basket given that <laughs> arthur is the one arthurton uh, is the capital and Arthur is the person that's been installed, talking dog. Now then, what's your national anthem? Well, my national anthem, I chose the theme tune off my channel because I there was, I did, I, okay, so that's not strictly true. I did start off that way, but then someone sent me um, a song that they'd sort of curated for the channel. I haven't shown it yet, but I thought actually, I was thinking about it and I thought, oh that actually could be a good national anthem and I could send it to you and you could play it and that and because it's got words in it as well and I thought that would be perfect to to some way showcase someone's talent but also that it's representative of Zimbabwe <laughs> so can so yes. you can you give us a snippet can you hum a bit of it uh, mm, no uh well uh, it, it, it's it's kind of so okay, not particularly so it, catchy it's not particularly catchy then well no it, it is it's kind of it, it's but it's it's oh god it, it's kind of like poppy but it but mm -hmm. it it's got like the words in like bubble bubble community and ems is uh that, oh i i, I no uh, but i can send it to you and then you can show it on your channel and so people will get it if that well, makes sense. Subject to it throwing a spanner in the works on copyright. Oh no, that I've I've had full because I've not shown it anywhere. He's not. So we have full because I said to him about that and we got full rights to, to do it. So it's mm -hmm. fine. Okay, it, should, well, well, it should be. Uh, well, I'll have a look at that as and when I receive it. But so there's a national anthem. Does it have a name, this particular piece of music? It does, but I oh, I didn't look that up. I apologise. I didn't look that one up. So it does have a name, but I, off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. OK, so at the moment, it is the Nameless National Anthem. <laughs> the Nameless National Anthem. Not okay. starting off well. We, we don't know. Well, you know what it sounds like, but none of us do because you're refusing to hum it. And all that we I'm know is it's using. <laughs> I well, just, you, you, I, you didn't I, do I just, it. I just don't know how to because it's kind of like do do bubble family kind of. I and do, and do, I'm gonna do that bit. Do that a bit. Do that bit again. How does it go? <laughs> do do bubble family. <laughs> so it seems that it causes people to collapse into laughter fairly quickly. Is is that the stated intention of this national anthem? I think it is. I think. Okay. I mean, come on. When I've got Arthurton with a talking dog, and mm. I've named it Zimbabwe, we're going. We're definitely starting off with the humorous kind of aspect to this. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, I yeah, humor is a very big thing for me. So yeah. 
OK, so with the Nameless National Anthem, which seems to start off with a boom, boom, and then something bubble and then collapse into laughter. Well, that's all we seem we're going to be getting there. So we'll move swiftly on, as they say, to what is your national dish? OK, it's, it has to be, which is very typically British, but it has to be roast dinner and I've got to have apple crumble in there. It's my country, so I've decided mm -hmm. that it's a roast dinner. And I understand there might be some vegetarians in the world, but it's mainly about the roast potatoes. It's it's they. So I'm going to. Yes. OK, so maybe roast potato is my dish. So because it's got to be crispy, fluffy in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, that's. Well, I mean, you can the, have a roast dinner if you want or if you just want to be. Oh, well, it as yeah. A, but I think roast roast dinner, definitely. But roast potatoes, I think, are going to be a classic um, staple mm. for my country. It's like. We're going to be known for our excellent roast potatoes. Okay. And um, how do you create your roast potatoes? What's the what's the process? Okay, so parboiling. Mm -hmm. And then when they are parboiled, you put them in a colander, shake them, and then you sprinkle some semolina over the top, some dried semolina over the top. Oh, and... I've not come, ac not come across that before. Carry All on. All right. Yeah. But by obviously around that time, you're putting some oil in a pan putting it in the mm -hmm. oven, making sure mm -hmm. that it's very, very hot. And then you add the potatoes after you've sort of shook them up a little bit with your semolina, put them in, and then they come up to super crispy and fluffy in the middle. And they are just chef's kiss, the best roast potatoes ever, in my opinion. I must admit, I do a pretty mean roast potato myself. Oh, is that a challenge? <laughs> no, a not at all. Challenge. No, sim simply a fact. <laughs> um, <laughs> That, that is one of my fortes. Is um, it? it? It is. But I'm interested with the suggestion of using semolina. I just use flour. Mm. And uh, that works yes. in terms of fluffing it up. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, semolina. So the roast potato is going to be the national dish. And is this eaten on special occasions? Is it eaten every week? When is this roast potato going to make its presence felt? I think it has to be definitely on a sunday so i would like mm -hmm. to keep with the traditional sunday sort of roast because i feel that to some degree we've lost that as a country so if i was going to have my own country i would like to make that a staple and i think that i think there should be a shop that is nationwide that that does roast potatoes but all different kinds i feel like this would be something that should should happen so mm -hmm. there's a particular shop that just creates different styles of roast potatoes that's probably from all over the world and it becomes a staple thing in in the country okay so you you've gone back a bit towards having a roast dinner so if you were to have this roast dinner um what meat would you have in it oh it's always going to be lamb for me and i really hope that that doesn't cause some upset interesting interesting i do love so not, roast lamb it's one of so my not, favorites uh, not beef no, no, no. Okay. It's all. Yeah, I do like beef. I do like beef. I'm not going to turn down roast beef, but mm -hmm. um, pork is probably the only one I'm not. I'm not a fan of. I'm okay. Not not a fan of. But yeah. So roast lamb, yummy. Roast lamb. You've got your roast potatoes. What other vegetables are on this roast dinner? It's got to be honey roasted parsnips. Mm -hmm. Definitely something I would have. Yeah. Um, long stem broccoli. I love mm -hmm. mm, sprouts. Okay. I would ban. I would ban sprouts. Okay. Sprouts are not allowed in my country because they're evil. They're like little any, evil cabbages. Any and carrots? Um, yes. I like the shant. Is it chantonay? Is it the chantonay carrots? Okay. Little tiny little ones. I really like those. Petit pois. Yeah. Uh, cauliflower cheese. I would have mm. cauliflower cheese. I love cauliflower cheese homemade. So yeah. So that would be. So I, don't, I have a big roast dinner. I like yeah, it's my roast pretty, pretty, pretty substantial. Okay. Yes. Well, that's going to ensure that the nation's well fed. Exactly. What's, what's the national animal? Dragon. A dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Welsh might have something to say about that. Why I'm a sure, dragon? But, but uh, because I think they're deeply misunderstood. Um, and But they're also they can take care of their own they're tough but i feel that they're misunderstood creatures and i'd like to just bring them back because obviously they're extinct so i'd like to bring them back as pets 
Okay, well, they they didn't actually exist to begin with. They're mythical, but um... no, not in my. We're talking about my country here, so <laughs> so in my country they did, but okay, they, they, they did don't exist. now. Yes, okay. yes. Right. So I'd like to bring them back. Yes, I'm so, not talking about the real world. <laughs> so, given that they're they're deeply misunderstood, is it the case that you know they've marched in and laid down on the psychiatrist's couch and said, I, I'm deeply misunderstood, and then unfortunately ignite the uh, consulting room with their fiery breath <laughs> if they're a fire-breathing dragon. Of course, there might be different ones, frost dragons. Yeah, I think they have anger so issues. Yeah, I think they definitely I, have anger yeah. issues. So, uh, uh, so that would definitely need to be worked on. <laughs> I can't so go in what, around. In what, way are they mis- in what way are they misunderstood? Because I think that they... Oh, okay, so I'm, I suppose if going in and how I would think is in like make believe, obviously, that they are genuinely nice creatures. Mm-hmm. And I think that just because they go around breathing fire and setting fire to things, I mean, that's not their fault. That's how they're created. So I just feel that that makes them misunderstood. I think if you get to know them, they would be. Yeah, I think that they would uh, they would they they would they protect you know, if you if you you know you get them in the right way, they protect your village, they protect your town, your country, your city. So yeah. Okay, right. So I didn't they, think too deeply on that one. No, so they don't they don't come along and burn everything down, steal all your gold, no, and take it away no. to a cave. No. No. <laughs> these are these are, these are deeply misunderstood dragons that just want to fit in. <laughs> yes. Okay, they just need to be invited to more birthday parties, and then I'm sure that everything <laughs> will be okay. Right. Okay. So that's the national animal, and. Um, an interesting angle to choose it because it's deeply misunderstood. Uh, nothing to do with its ferociousness or what it represents. It's because it's deeply misunderstood. Fair enough. Let's turn to your flag. What would your flag be like? Uh, so my flag would be, uh, so the background would be green because yeah. green is my uh, favourite colour and I'm half Irish. So that would be green. And it dark, it dark would, green, light green, pea green? It would be... I would say um, em- like an emerald green. Okay, yeah. Like an emerald green. Yeah. Then I would have like, so I have a logo on my channel, which I actually got created for me in the very, very beginning, which is called, it was like the Bubble Family logo. And it's a picture of a, of the world. Mm. And then it's got like little sort of people around the outside. So mm. I would like that on sort of in the center. Yes. And then the dragon in the middle okay, I, I so... and the dragon i have in mind for some reason that comes up is the cartoon dragon uh toothless from uh how to oh how to something your dragon uh, how to train your dragon that's it yes yes okay. for some reason although, that although, is the dragon that comes up i see although i've heard of the film or program i didn't know it's called toothless and i've n- never <laughs> seen it so we've got yeah. an emerald green background with then the world, which is part of the logo that has been created for you. And then your bubble people who look like flumps stood around <laughs> that. Yeah. And then the dragon at the center of the globe. Yes. Fair enough. Yes. Well, that's, uh, that, that all fits together. All aspects of you and your country catered for. <laughs> what's, your, what's your national motto, Emma? My national motto is Unity, equality, non-violent, and peace. Unity, equality, non-violent, mm-hmm. and peace. Okay. I suppose, listening to that, I could understand unity, equality, and peace. The sort of non-violent, it seems a little bit incongruous, not as a concept, just in terms of the wording. Um, why have you included non-violent particularly? because i in this i i don't like violence at all so so i feel that in this world even if i i haven't thought in like going forward how that would actually work in general because i think that to some degree you've got to have some force to some to some extent so so i think my non-violence would be in in the general like no no guns no uh you know that sort of the violent the unnecessary violence that we see 
mm. like in today's society. This is so this is where it sort of died. I've started to go a little bit into like a little bit more serious. It's like I, mm-hmm. I sort of shift and, and go into that a bit. So yeah, so I, I I take that very seriously, I think. And I, I I dislike it immensely. It just it does something to me like in so much inside that I would like in an idyllic way a, a country that just doesn't promote violence in any way or and and doesn't hate her for it. You mentioned um unnecessary violence. Yeah. Which therefore means that it follows that some violence must be necessary. And so I don't it's know. your it's your country. You don't think any violence is necessary. Well but that's the thing, because then you're looking at people. So then it comes down to how people behave and how people act. And in my ideal scenario, everyone lives harmoniously and there isn't any violence and we all live happily ever after. Of course, I would love that in a Disney version. Of course, I think that that is something that a lot of us would would like to some degree of having not to see the violence that we see every day. Mm-hmm. But then there comes a point when it's like, OK, but then there might be some people that decide that that's not OK and uh, and they're going to potentially do something. So then d- do we have to sort of enact excessive force to stop that from happening? So I don't know. So it's almost like when I say unnecessary, I feel like it's I want an idyllic world. But then my practical head kicks in and goes, but is that possible? Is that is is you know are, that then becomes like the the fantasy then the reality and that's what i mean it's like i shift that mm-hmm. you know going from the fun aspect of like in an ideal world yes i would love that and all violence is banned and everyone lives happily ever after but then something sort of within me goes mm, but is that possible and what if someone decides that actually they don't want this idyllic country and they want to take over and does do i need to have it you know, excessive force but to stop that from happening. Maybe I'll bring in my dragon, and they say that and that's violent. But but you know, that's what they're there for. If you know to protect as well. So who knows? Well, I can I, I can understand if you're saying our entire populace is one where, in essence, there's no crime, so there's no need to force anybody. Nobody engages in violence. You've got this almost mm. sort of do- docile population that doesn't transgress in any way. So because force is the ultimate application of power, and if you don't have any cause to make people do things, then you won't have recourse to violence. But it strikes me that there's two potential flaws with that, although as a concept, it's a a noble one. The first is, of course, it's um, the external uh, aspect, whereby if another country decides that it's going to invade you, you're going to be faced with violence because yeah. they will utilize that as part of their invasion. And also, if you think about the concept of violence, it's not just necessary physical violence. For instance, what if you were stuck inside a building that was burning and you need to smash a window to get out? That's a violent act, isn't it? The destruction of property. So Yes. Mm. So that's why I said unnecessary. So so it's almost like so then if there's necessary, like you say, you have to get out of a situation. Like if you're in a car that's got into a lake and you've got to smash the window, you've got to yeah. get out and save yourself. <clears throat> of course, mm-hmm. that's necessary. So okay. I think it is the unnecessary violence. But I but then like I say, I didn't think about that too deeply because it started off with this is like this make believe world, which oh, you know it, it is in general. Mm. But I didn't kind of go into because I suppose in all fairness, I thought you were just going to ask me questions and then I was going to explain a little bit. But actually now I'm sort of talking to you. It's like, yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot of flaws in my <laughs> in my answers. Well, it's not a, it's not about there being wrong answers, but rather I will to some extent not to catch people out or to make them feel bad. But just as a talking point, perhaps point out things that you might not have occurred to you or just ask you, how would you deal with this scenario, which is likely to crop up after all you're yeah. the leader? Or well, because after all, I I can't have a dialogue with Arthur. Uh, he's not here, so uh, <laughs> so I, it's you as the leader that's going to have to deal with these thorny issues as they arise. Okay, so the national motto is unity, equality, non-violent, and peace. Turning to the question of your national day, what is it called, and on what date would it fall? Okay, so. It's called the Bubble Party Day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and it falls on the uh, I've decided that we're not going to have Valentine's Day anymore because I think Valentine's Day is just a gimmick. So we're now yeah. going to have it on the 14th of February. So it's going to replace what would have been Valentine's Day in other countries. But it's bubble party day, whereas a community, everyone has a street party, bringing everyone together. No one isn't invited. It's completely exclu- you know, inclusive. Um, and it's also the day you check in on your vulnerable neighbours. So that is my bubble party day. Well, that seems rather laudable. So people looking out for one another and there's a street yeah. party to boot. Okay. And dispensing with the uh, manufactured money grab that is St. Valentine's Day and uh, making it about looking after people. Right. Yeah. That seems sensible enough. Now, your currency of your nation. I can think of an obvious one that you would probably choose in relation to this, but... Uh, what your what is your currency known as? Zem. Zem. Okay, that makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. And your lowest denomination of note. Who or what appears on it? I uh, now obviously because I only got this yesterday. The yeah. yesterday I got this or today I can't I cannot remember. So obviously I was I didn't have a lot of time to sort of think about this because I was working, but I thought my lowest note. Obviously we have. You know, obviously people have presidents and royal family, et cetera, and prime ministers or whatever. But I thought I'm going to have my animals because yeah. at the end of the day, they are an integral part of my life. They are very important to me. So the lowest um, I've I've gone with age. So Tazzy is the youngest. So he would be the lowest because he is the youngest. And then it, then I would have a middle one somewhere, which would be Pip. And then Arthur would be my highest. Are these all dogs? No, Tazzy no. is a cat and so is Pip. Oh, right. OK. So the cat on the lowest one and, the, and on the highest denomination note yes, would be Arthur, Arthur the dog. Yes. Would, yes. He be to- would he be talking or just looking into the middle <laughs> distance? Looking into the middle distance for that one, I think. <laughs> OK, understood. Right. Well, we've got the Zen with a cat and a dog on them, which is entirely appropriate given your uh, preference for animals. Now, we're going to turn to some of your policies, Emma. So I'm going to give you some choices. You have to select one of them, no caveats. So you go with the one which is closest to what represents Zimbabwe's policies with you as leader. We're going to address foreign policy first. Accordingly, is the foreign policy of Zimbabwe one of defending the nation itself only? Or will you defend your own country and aid your allied nations? Will you adopt a world policing role, perhaps taking unity, equality, non-violence and peace elsewhere around the planet? Will you be expansionist in the sense of there are historic claims to lands that you wish to restate a claim to? Or will you be expansionist regarding those historic, historical territories and you've got a covetous eye on some of the natural resources of another country, which would be rather useful for you to have? Or is it a pretty aggressive stance, which is, you've looked at me funny, so I'm going to invade you. What's the policy? Wait, I feel like you've changed some of them. Uh, that Some of those were not on my list. <laughs> so, I because initially I had aid allied nations and defend own. Mm-hmm. But actually, I do like the one where you said reinstate, is it lands to... Yeah. yeah. So but you'd be claiming them for your country. So if you no, no, giving them back to the people like the indigenous population and no, you know, not, I, I, no that's not no, that's is not, that not what you mean? No, oh, okay. no, that's no, it's claiming oh. your historical oh. claim on it. So in a way, for instance, like Putin claims Ukraine belongs to Russia. Oh, so okay. it's oh, that no, kind no. of thing. No, okay. So then okay, I like I also like the other one where you said installing some of the policies that that I have in this country in in this uh, country to others, but I'm not sure how possible that would be. So I'm going to stick with my original: is aid allied nations and mm-hmm. defend own. Okay. Nuclear missiles. Okay. You don't have any, or you'll have them as a deterrent, but you're never going to use them. But you won't let that be known to other nations, or you have them and you will use them in retaliation if nuclear missiles are launched against your country. Or, yeah, let's nuke any excuse to wipe somebody off the map. <laughs> uh, uh, deterrent only and not let it be known. That's what I've put down. 
Yep. I do okay. find the last one funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's fine. Press freedom. There's no state interference whatsoever, or you will interfere in the freedom of the press in order to look after national security, or you'll interfere on the grounds of whatever you deem to be sensitive. So if you don't like it, then you'll interfere. Uh, or you ensure the media is state owned. I this okay, so I really struggled with this one because I have such innate dislike for the press. I understand it it, it, it used to be it, it's it, ah, so what I've written is press interference, I decide it needs to be cleaned up and be honest. And then I did, it's my country, so I'm making the rules. If any story is deemed a lie and not backed by factual evidence, then it's not to be printed. And that's what I've put down. OK, so that would most likely essentially go with what you deem to be sensitive, contrary to what you think is right, therefore would result in interference. I don't know, because I don't know, because I don't want to be the judge and jury of what is deemed right or wrong. That's not well, what just, I want. You just, you, you just were. You just said it, any story that doesn't have any facts backing it up is deemed as... Yeah, but that's not as in, like, my decision. It's like, it's, it like, it's got to be you, fact you just, by... You, it is. You just made it. <laughs> Can't wriggle out of this. <laughs> you, just made the, you just made the policy. Well, okay, then, yeah, we'll go with that then. <laughs> Jolly good. Okay, religious tolerance. Um, complete freedom of worship and expression, or there is freedom of worship, but you can't be provocative towards other religions, or whatever Zimbabwe's indigenous religion is, let us assume there, there is one, um, that's the one that is allowed and promoted but other ones are secretly tolerated, or it's your existing indigenous only, and you have a, a policy of non-tolerance of other religions and indeed persecution of those unapproved religions, or it's your stance, you worship me and only me, remember. <laughs> uh, okay, complete freedom to worship your your religion faith, but you, yeah, you must respect yeah. and have uh, of other people, absolutely. Understood. Equality. Are minorities actively supported, protected, and they gain positive discrimination? Or are minorities protected by anti-discrimination legislation? Or is the attitude of Zimbabwe, we, we promote ability, we're not interested in filling quotas? Or are minorities, minority issues, they're ignored? Or is it the case that minorities are actively persecuted? Because let's be honest, they're nothing but a nuisance. Okay, so nah. So what I wrote, I promote ability. Everyone should be given the chance equally, but also the tools to work towards having the ability to achieve. So I don't want minorities put on a pedestal just because they're minorities. It's like you, you're you given the tools to to be good at something. If you're good for the job, you get the job. If you it, it just just because you're a minority doesn't mean that you're just going to get the job. You know, so you so you you have the ability to achieve and have the tools to achieve. So mm -hmm. if you're good, you get it. If you're not, you don't. OK, so it's the promotion of ability and you're not filling quotas. Yeah. 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 OK, those are those policies. We're going to return to more of your policies presently. But now we're going to move on to your cabinet. And it's a short form cabinet. These are the key positions that are going to assist you in the ruling and governance of your country. Who's going to be your defence chief? Oh, see, OK, I couldn't answer this one because I would have to have people in that I trust. And so these were So this would be my friends, my family. You're allowed to appoint friends and family. Oh, oh, I can. So, OK, so mm -hmm. my dad. OK, so I'll probably put my dad in there. OK, so your father is the defence chief. You've mentioned that you have to have the ability to trust him. But um, is he well versed in the art of war? And uh... Yes, he was in the he was in the, the military. So, yeah, he's ah, right. OK, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he has a military background. So that fits with that. Who's your foreign secretary? Uh, my mum, I think my mum, because she's she's pretty smart. So I put my mum in there. I thought you were going to say she's been on a lot of holidays. So, um, well, she has. She... <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but, okay, but so there we are. But she's pretty good at uh, the debate as well. So I think, yeah, she'd be pretty good at that. Okay. And who's your chief scientific officer? That would be my son, Kyle, because he is 
he, he is so smart when it comes to science. He's he's absolutely fascinated with everything to do with science, science fiction, technology. So absolutely put him in there. Right. Who is holding the purse strings? Who's the Chancellor of the Exchequer? I would put that as my other son, Tristan, mm -hmm. because he's got a very smart head on his shoulders. He's good with money. So I'd put him in that role. Is he a bit of a breadhead? Yes. Okay. And finally, who's your Minister for Fun? Me. <laughs> so you're going to take that role. Okay. I'm taking that role. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Because I think I'd be excellent at it. I I I'm always up for fun. Um, mm. It is something that's very known about me. So I think that would be, yeah, that would be a brilliant job for me. <laughs> okay. Well, you were originally going to install a talking dog as leader, so I suppose that that <laughs> might be indicative of a, a, an element of fun. The the Zen bubble we herald has raised concerns about rampant nepotism with this cabinet. How do you answer that? Wait, what? <laughs> what? The who? <laughs> Your the... national paper of record, the editor has run a headline asking about this cabinet because it's full of your family. There well, suggestions I... that, that this can't really be good for the nation if it's all one family that are governing in this way. Well, I'd say that the person who interviewed me told me I could have family, so, <laughs> so that's well, that. You can have them, but you're going to have to justify it. So you know, they're, I don't they're have like... to justify anything. I run the country. <laughs> I don't okay, have to justify so, anything. So we're going to see some. <laughs> so we are going to see some state interference in the press freedom there by saying I'm not going to answer any questions about no, that. You, you can I liken would. me to Saddam Hussein and his sons being put into positions of power. Yeah, that's, that's quite. That's harsh. <laughs> well, that's what the, that's what the press are saying. They're saying it's similar, and you're you're not giving them any Fake answers, news. so they're going to they're going to draw their own conclusions. Fake news. <laughs> Fake news is the cry. Fake news is the cry from the <laughs> gilded ivory towers that the bubble family <laughs> occupy as they look down on the proles. Okay, uh, right. Okay, well. I understand the basis of, <clears throat> excuse me, trusting all of those individuals. So that's why you've appointed uh, family and yourself. Uh, naturally, questions might be asked about nepotism, but you're not <laughs> going to answer them. So that's fair enough. You are the leader of the country. So we'll see if they're hammering at the gates with pitchforks and torches before the day is out. <laughs> now then, <laughs> which country would be your major ally? Um, oh, okay, so I, I'm probably going to be quite boring here and I'm going to say the UK because the UK is where I live so I've got to give it some props um yeah. because it's uh yeah it's, it's it's where I live and I do love my country so as much as there might be some slight issues but you know so is everyone so yeah UK makes sense which country would be your main enemy I won't have enemies because my country's awesome There'd be everyone is going to want to come to my country. They're, they're going to want to be friends with me because I'm fun. Well, I'm all we're all about the fun. So, so I'm not going to have any enemies. What? Well, you might not regard them as an enemy, and that that's is a stance you can quite freely adopt. But the neighbouring country of Envitania says we want what you've got, <laughs> and they're they're doing some saber rattling. Well, so I've got dragons, so you've got, bring you've it. Got, oh, it's, it's plural now. I thought there was only one, but they, they, no, they've, they've no, bred. No, there's more. Okay. Fun. All right. They okay. bred. So you, you don't think you'd have an enemy? You just think everybody no. would want to get along with your country, okay? Yeah, I'd want to get along with everybody. Understood. Is there any particular group that wouldn't be welcome in Zimbabwe? No, no. I Every, think everyone every, would be everyone's welcome. welcome. Yeah. The hideously ugly, they can come in. Who defines who's hideously ugly? Well, it's a matter of, you know, you look at somebody and scream, I think that you probably think they're hideously <laughs> ugly. Well, I can't say I've ever done that, have you? <laughs> oh, well, I don't scream. <laughs> I might I might give them a colour me beautiful leaflet. <laughs> Point them in the direction of a plastic surgeon. 
<laughs> or, suggest, or, or, or maybe just suggest that they uh, off themselves. Who knows? Um, oh but everybody, every, everybody's welcome. So, uh, as, as I say, the hideous yes. ugly, yeah, the, yes. the, hygi- the hygienically challenged, they're allowed in. Yeah, yeah. well, I might, you know, direct them to the nearest shower, but yeah. 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 Okay, but they, they, <laughs> they, they, they can come in. Yes. Okay, yeah. Right, okay, everybody's welcome. So, would you would you have anybody keeping an eye on the border? Would you just think, nah, there's no need. Anybody can just oh. walk in. Yeah, so there would be people keeping an eye because there are possible. Oh, my, oh, I don't know because now that's challenged my theory of everyone's welcome. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Because if everyone's welcome, then I don't need to police the border. No. So if I'm policing the border, then that means that there would be people that are not welcome. Yeah. Hmm. Curious. Okay. So yes, then clearly there would be some, uh, but but who? That's the thing. Uh, but I suppose I'm basing that. My answer of everyone's welcome is everyone is going to be nice and lovely and all of those things. So mm-hmm. I guess if if. Well, if you're assuming well, that's the case, you don't need anybody manning the border. No, I don't. But why does that bother me? That's, that's created that's, something. You, that's created yeah. something there, HG. Yeah, uh, well, you clearly think there are mm, some undesirables. Yes, clearly I do. But am I thinking as in like now, as in like the real world? Is that bleeding into my fantasy world? Fantasy world, no need to police because everyone's wonderful. But it, the real world is bleeding into that because obviously I've put the real world in there because I said UK. That's right. In yeah. essence... Yeah. Perhaps to help by way of clarification, your country can be a fantasy one, but it's on planet Earth. So it has to fit yeah. in with other individuals. With other individuals. So, yes, yeah. I would have to say then I would, yeah, okay. So there would be some people that perhaps wouldn't, okay. wouldn't be coming in. But it's yeah. not, it wouldn't be based on looks or, or the fact that they no. don't shower. So <laughs> it would be based on, um, hmm. <sighs> And how would you police that? How would you? I mean, I guess would I search them if I, you know, so they don't come in with weapons? I guess that would have to be a thing. Oh, my country's starting to get complicated. Uh, well, that's the nature, you see. This is the eye yes. opener for you. This yeah. is why I don't rule the world. See. Well, you might have to have a word with your father as he's defence chief. I guess I'm going to have also, to. And your mother as well as foreign secretary and hash out a solution. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to have, gonna have, to have a, ca- a cabinet meeting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can you can call it once this it once this discussion has concluded. <laughs> now we're going to move on to the part where you might shine, or you might cause people to recoil in horror at your suggestions. We'll have to wait <laughs> and see. You've got five foundation policies of your government, and these, of course, can be anything you wish, from the ridiculous to the entertaining, through to the very serious. What's your first policy, Emma? Um, equality everyone has the ability to learn a trade okay what if you don't want to well they've got to earn money somehow but i think it's okay so it's not they have to they have the ability if they want to so it's not well if you're going to be single if if you're going to be single that's not really a trade is it no what i Okay, so let me clarify that a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So everyone has the ability to learn. So let's 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 yeah. go with that. So everyone has the oh, ability okay. to learn to be able to. So it's not exclusively to people who co- like college and university. I want that to be free, so they can okay. learn. So everybody has access to education. Y- yes, yes, yeah. and le- yeah. Okay, that 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 would be better. Yeah. Okay, everyone has access to education. Okay. Yes. That speaks for itself. What's policy number two? Children are never to be exploited in any way and have to have an education that fits the individual's needs. Children not to be exploited. In any way. But they're really good at getting up chimneys because they're so small. <laughs> Is that exploitation <laughs> if, we, if we pay them the minimum wage? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is? Okay. Just, just checking. Just no chimneys okay. allowed in my in my country. What bad. about what if it was a production of uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> and the little people uh, are on strike? Can we use children then? 
They get to sing, <laughs> sing and dress up. With the oh. No, because they're not allowed to, the little people are not allowed to go on strike. <laughs> okay, right. So that's a, a, an adjacent that's policy. Their job. That's their job. <laughs> that, that's, little people, your job is to be on Palumpas and nothing else. Okay. <laughs> that's not what I meant. But... Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just. Uh, all my just... lovely, all my lovely things. <laughs> it's like they're just being <laughs> torn apart. Well. What do you expect? What do you oh, expect? That's true. No, that's that's okay. true. So children, I, I... children are not to be exploited. Okay. Yeah. What, that's clear. What's policy number three? All animals are to be treated with the same rights as humans, including a similar system to the NHS, where basic care is free and they can have insurance that will cover everything else. So all animals have the same rights as humans. Yes. Okay. Yes. So do they get social security? They get to sign on when they're not working? <laughs> no, I meant as in like healthcare because they're, vets oh, are so healthcare. stupidly expensive. It's crazy. So yeah. so that is something that is a bugbear of mine. So to me, it's like their, their care. It, people want animals because they love them. That's going to be such a priority for me in my country. So they are all vets, their care is minimal cost so people can afford to care for and look after animals okay i suppose if you don't have anybody patrolling the borders <laughs> you can spend that money quite easily in relation to ensuring <laughs> that the that the, that the rabbits get a swanky room in which to recover after having their ears pinned back and, and so like so forth so yeah okay yeah at this point well, i've got no idea where this money's coming from but it's well, there. That's, well indeed but, uh, I think that's been quite a theme in many of these is that people just assume they've got a bottomless pit of money for uh, their I policies. Think so. so yeah, I we've not really got into the the economics of it all because that would make, that would overcomplicate matters. I, I think Pol it would. Yeah, policy number four, please, Emma. Uh, the working wage is decent enough for everybody that they can afford to live, eat, and not struggle. So again, this bottomless pit of money is going. It's doing really yeah. well. So inflation is rampant then, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but the sentiment, yeah. the sentiment is noble enough. And policy number five. Everyone has the right to health care, including mental health. Okay. Everyone has the right to health care. Including mental health. Including mental health. Why have you emphasised mental health? <laughs> Because it's something that is so important to me. It, yeah. I mean, obviously, given my job, but the fact that it is something that that it's there's just such a gap where people are struggling to gain access to it. The waiting lists are too long. It's non-existent in in a lot of areas, and I just think that if we if we paid more attention to mental health, and we got, and we certainly accessed it early on you know certainly in schools then I feel that a lot of the issues that sort of come up with adults they wouldn't necessarily be there so yeah so mental health access to everyone and I understand that that means employing a lot of therapists so again I'm not quite sure where the money's coming from for that but well, you know, that's it's my, a problem. I'll find uh it well, that, that's a problem that Tristan's going to have to address for you, isn't it? So he, well, exactly. His, he'll just have to wrap a wet towel around his head and thrash <laughs> that one out. Well, Emma, thank you very much for sharing your vision of Zem Bubblewee, which is a country which originally was going to be ruled by a talking dog, but eventually there was a bit of a back room <laughs> adjustment so that Emma came back to the fore. It's one that is governed by nepotism with her family involved in all of the positions in the short form cabinet. The motto is all about unity, equity, nonviolent and peace. Dragons are prominent. They're going to be utilized on the flag. They're going to appear as the national animal and they will burn your backside off if you start to cause problems in Zen Bubble. We. It's certainly a tasty country to be. There are delicious roast potatoes made with semolina and you can spend your Zems on all manner of different things in order to ensure that you can have a range of psychotherapists that you can go and see, as they're probably going to be the most dominant employment group in this country. That's the vision 
that Emma has set out. Does it appeal to you? Do you think to yourself, I'm rubbing my hands with glee, I'm not hideous ugly or smelly, but even if I were, I know I would be welcome. So it's utopia for me. Or are you thinking, hmm, no, sounds like my own personal hell. I don't think I'll be going there. <laughs> well, you get the chance, valuable viewers, to cast your vote in that regard. Go to the community section on my channel and you'll be able to cast your vote as to whether you would like to be a citizen of Zem Bubble Wee. All that remains, Emma, is to thank you for your contribution today. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> You're most welcome. <laughs> okay.